you and I both know that narcissists do not feel regret when they cheat on you. That's why they show no remorse whatsoever. They blame it on you and justify it that way. But what most people do not know is that they do regret something when they get caught cheating. What is that thing? Let's find out in today's episode. I'm your host, Danish, a psychologist and a narcissistic abuse recovery professional. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is one thing a narcissist regrets after cheating on you. If that is interesting, please consider subscribing because your subscription to the channel helps in spreading awareness about narcissistic abuse. Before we get started, here's a quick and small announcement for you. I'm doing an online workshop. The topic will be how to overcome betrayal trauma in five practical steps. I did it already once and now I am doing it this week, Sunday evening, 9.30 p.m. EST. If you want to join and learn how a narcissist betrays you beyond infidelity and then have all the practical tools to heal, do not miss this last opportunity to register yourself by clicking the link in the description. Back to the topic. Narcissists love to have many sources of supply at their disposal because they love attention, they chase novelty, and that's what makes them feel important. So it's, it's in their DNA, if you will. They miss one thing when they get caught. And what is it? The thrill. Yes, the thrill of deceiving you, the thrill of fooling you. When they get caught, they miss not feeling that thrill anymore. The thrill is not about chasing people, cheating on you. No, it's the thrill is not about that. The thrill is about fooling you. The thrill is about not getting caught. Why do they miss it? Well, think about it. It's obvious. It made them feel powerful. They are exploitative, Machiavellian. They know how to weaponize people's trust against them. They know how to use your loyalty against you by mirroring it. And the fact that they can get away with cheating for five years, 10 years, 15 years means they are super powerful, or at least that's how they perceive it. That's how they translate it, how they associate it with being ultra powerful. That is a thrill. And how do I know this? Well, a narcissist told me this in one of the sessions that I recently had accidentally with them. I asked them, what is it that you miss about cheating? What pushes you to seek it out? And they said, it's the thrill of not getting caught. It's not just the, the, the thrill of meeting somebody new. That's just a small part of it. The thrill is all about fooling the other person. The thrill is all about making them believe I am with you when it's just a reflection of mine they're holding on to. It's, a, it's my shadow when in reality I am with somebody else. I can't help but be that. That's who I am. And I must tell you that is psychopathic, that is antisocial, that is sociopathic, that is evil. Why evil? Well, I say this a lot. They show no remorse, no understanding or empathy towards the other person they have wronged. Doesn't that make it evil? Because you're intentionally causing harm. Why? Well, that thrill matters more to you and you're enjoying causing pain that makes you sadistic. This reminds me of Dark Tetrad, the four traits that reveal the dark side to humanity, the evil side to humanity. Psychopathy, narcissism, sadism and Machiavellianism. These are the four traits and I believe every narcissist has a little bit of each. What do you think about that? Let me know in the comments. They enjoy the thrill of taking you out on a date night and simultaneously talking to other people cheating on you. They enjoy the thrill of impregnating you while sleeping with other women if you are a woman in relationship with a narcissistic man. The situation can be turned around and it's the same possibility. A man with a narcissistic woman who does this to him. So it's the thrill. That is what makes them evil. That makes them feel invincible. That makes them feel faster than light. That makes them feel a stealthy wolf who can bite you, hunt you down in one strike and you're out. That is how 
it makes them feel. Now, if you and I were to feel that way, we'll feel disgusted of ourself, won't we? Like, how could I be that? No, I can't do that to my partner. If I do it, I should die. No, this is not what being a human being means. They don't feel any of that. That's where lack of a living conscience comes into the picture. I say it all the time, their moral compass is corrupted. They don't have true moral values. There is no true self guiding their decisions. And this is how it manifests. How can somebody enjoy the thrill in deceiving their partner? Only, with, only a person with no values, hijacked moral compass, destructive moral compass can do it. Somebody who has no conscience, no super ego telling him or her that this is wrong, you shouldn't do it. I always also say, if a narcissist can, he will or she will. There is no if I should. If I can, I will. That is the principle they always follow. So that's the only thing they love about cheating. They don't really regret all the pain they have caused you. The, the family falling apart, setting it all on fire. They don't care about it. They will leave you in a millisecond for somebody new who promises a new future. In a millisecond, they can burn it all to ground and they can fight you like you are their biggest rival, their enemy, their alter ego they want to destroy. That is how they are. They split very quickly, as you already know. So this is what they regret. Let me know what you think they regret when they get caught cheating on you. Drop your answers in the comments below and I will talk to you in the next one. Until then, as always, let the healing begin and continue.